Cohn was born and practices in Amsterdam. He was educated at Delft, where he's now a professor, as well as at Geneva. Um, to put him in the context of the series, that when he was very young, he became part of the forum group and indeed the editorial me meetings for the Forum magazine, the famous Forum magazine, were held in his flat. And the special issue of Forum, which I would recommend people to look at, um, called Homework for More Hospitable Form, I think still remains the best statement of his ideas in English. There are some books of his ideas which he has in English translation, but has not as yet found a publisher for. Um, I first discovered Hermann Herzberger's work as a student. I remember very vividly as a student in the mid to late 60s, the almost feverish excitement of discovering in Domus, where it was published, um, the photos and the polemic, both by Hermann Herzberger and both equally seductive, um, about the student residence in Amsterdam, his first major realized commission. And the thing that excited me as a student groping for one's own ideas in architecture was that here was somebody to, whose approach, it seemed, went right to the heart of architecture, to the interaction between inhabitant and building. Here was somebody seeking an architecture that would provoke in the user a sense of his or of her own potential to expand their habitual repertoire of activities and of enjoyment of these activities. Um, that the architecture had as much to do with the people as it had to do with form and so on. Um, the, such intentions, of course, are central to the ideas of structuralism, a sort of small movement within architecture found in, in Holland and Scandinavia, of which Herzberg is both the leading proponent and practitioner, um, very broadly and rather cryptically, because perhaps Herman will say more about this. Um, structuralism is an architecture structured by repeated constructional elements which in their terse and, and generous ambiguities offer a competence that is a potential for interpretation to which the user's response constitutes the performance or any one particular reading among the many possible. People will see the parallels there between the linguistic ideas of structuralism. Um, just another thing to reminisce about student days is that I remember um, that though I was lucky to have exceptional teachers and work in some exceptional practices, when I look back, what I learned most from about architecture were those landscape format books published by Gersberger in Zurich, the oeuvre complete of Corbusier, the three volumes on Alto, and the three volumes on Neutra. And it seems to me most fitting that Herzberger's complete works to date have just been published by a Swiss <laughs> in this identical landscape format. <laughs> um, no, but I say this because it seems to me Hertzberg is one of the few architects around whose work amounts to an oeuvre, an oeuvre that is consequent. By consequent, I mean two things. One is that the work is, of, is substantial enough to be of some consequence, something that will always be looked at again. But the other more important sense is that each building, each work, builds on, extends, modifies the ideas and achievements of its predecessors, so that the totality amounts to a resource that any other architect can learn from, and can learn an immense amount from. There are other architects who've built as much as Hermann Herzberger, even many who've made very in interesting and attractive buildings. But I find there are few other architects in the moment that you can learn so much from you know, other than just looking to see whether this wiggle or that is fashionable this year. But with Herzberger's work, like the earlier ones I mentioned who were published by Gersberger, um, it's irrelevant really whether or not you like his work or not. I think it's irrelevant whether you think all the, the buildings are successful. The point is that it's work you can get your teeth into. They're full of ideas, they're full of commitments made by the architect. There's something that you can analyze and ponder over years. They have nothing to do with style or fashion. They're about life itself and the, the reciprocity of human life and habitat. Consequently, it's a great pleasure and great honor to introduce Hermann Herzberger tonight. Thank you.
Well, I can add some slides to that lecture. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> could, they, could it be upside down? I prefer, I prefer my slides upside down. It's my fault, uh, apparently, because I should have, I think. But they may all three or, or all 80 upside down. <laughs> Well, now it's just memorized, but okay, we can do with this. This is, uh, of course, the, the orphanage of Alder van Eyck. And I want to start with that building, which is still threatened. Um, we made a big action to save it. Um, and um, at least people are talking. Uh, today about it, but it's not yet, it is not yet um, uh, there. We are still <coughs> full of hope that it, people at least understand, start to understand what the importance of the building is, but um, it's very important when people from abroad, not Dutch, but people outside of Holland um, insist on writing us about the importance of the building and, and sending us money to, to, to support the action. No, you are laughing, but that is the big problem, you know, because we made one paper, and I, I'm not sure whether you have many copies of that, and uh, I can promise you to to send you some copies, and we are going to make a, a, a second paper in which we are going to publish all the reactions, but we need money for that. Uh, um, everybody knows maybe why this building is so important. Uh, at least the younger Dutch generation is very strongly inspired by it, and I'm sure that, that the, the same thing is true for people outside uh, of Holland. I mean, I'm not going to give a lecture on this building. I could at least, uh, however, point out uh, two or three things why I think this building is so important. Uh, you know, first of all, it is the image of making uh, a, a, a building, a big building, um, um, in the way, in the mood, with my own words, of uh, a small town, and Alder van Eyck adds to it that uh, you should think of a small town in terms of a big building. And this is a complete new paradigm uh, for us, and um, uh, consequently you are not ending up in a big box, one more big box, but you end up in an articulated building which in at the same time is a small, a small town where all the elements, uh, where the an analysis of the program is made in such a way that it is in fact a conglomerate of, of houses. Next please. Full of hope that it will be more or less okay. Yes. Uh, the other thing I would like to point out is uh, that it is full of associations of, of whatever style or whatever way of working, way of designing uh, you can think of, uh, without any quotation. I mean, it is the proof that you can have, uh, so to say, all the historical, um, um, the, the whole scope of history uh, in your building without the slightest quotation. And that is something which, uh, of, of which it's not unimportant to tell this in London <laughs> at this moment, I think. Uh, the other thing, and that is what inspired me most, is that myself, uh, for my own work, is the fact that what Aldo van Eyck made here is, an, is a formal structure, because it's a very formal, it's, it's a quite a formal structure, uh, um, formally 
uh, very precise, uh, which is uh, to be considered a framework for an informal, uh, not to say daily life, um, uh, use in film, you know. And uh, for me, it was the building that put me on the track that there is no, uh, not an, an, an um, um, uh, contradiction in formal order and daily life. And for me, this was the big thing to start my own buildings. Next slide. And it's a bit of a uh, ridiculous to show you this slide, but I, uh, it's not for myself, you know. So take your pen, take your uh, pad, and, and, and just, uh, uh, just uh, uh, threepence, is that still there? <laughs> uh, or sixpence will already be a big help for us to make the next pub publication, I promise you, to send it to everybody who is giving us money and writes his name uh, in a readable way so that I can, with his address. Um, we are going to prepare uh, at Christmas time the next, um, the next paper with all the reactions um, which we are going to distribute to all the body. So forgive me for this, uh, this thing, but it's out of my heart. Uh, now we're going on the, on, the, on the other carousel, on my own work, and I told you how much this building inspired me, and I'm going to show you, the, um, to begin with, the Central Beheer uh, office building, which was made uh, uh, in 68 up to 72, which was the building um, you, you, you might know or not, um, which is very strongly um, a structure, a structure um, um, uh, which consists of a repetition of very similar and as such quite simple elements that, uh, that are so artic articulated that they can house the group form in which the population of this office building um, uh, in fact, uh, works. Next, please. Um, uh, so you see that that the, uh, this is this is made after the analysis of um, uh, how 1,000 people employees are working, and we found out that there was a, 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 a group um, a grouping in it. And um, based on that, we made these islands, uh, which can consist, uh, well, every floor of an island can, con well, is an island, so these towers of islands, uh, 16 people, and they are bridged um, uh, one to another, and, um, which make a grid of communication. Next, please. Uh, in the middle of this building, there's a big central area, which is not for, um, uh, for the uh, working purposes, but in fact, a sort of street where everybody can come, have his coffee, uh, discussion, all the, all the, um, uh, the discussion and, uh, um, how do you say, um, uh, meeting rooms are situated at this center. And uh, what I try to do is uh, to take up the image of um, the exterior um, of, of a street, you know, maybe uh, it, it, it is associated with a sort of Mediterranean town. Uh, it is glazed on top, so no rain will come in. And the materials, since the materials are made uh, um, uh, as outside materials, uh, one has the association of being outside, being outside his office room, being more free, like uh, finding the first or the, or, the, or the second coffee shop in the street opposite or next to uh, where he is, he, is, he is working. And since all the devices from, um, take, are taken from the outside uh, uh, space, from the exterior um, 
um, uh, space, uh, like the, the, the materials, and, 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 uh, which is very important, the light coming from above, you get that association. Also the pavement is like the normal pavement in, in Holland. So in fact it's, it, it feeds back to what materials are you, are you using. And in this very um, uh, extended um, interior space, uh, what well, is the heart of the building? And what I'm trying to say is uh, that there is no such a thing really as in interior and exterior. Of course, there is such a thing, but you can, um, what is the word, uh, soften it. You can, uh, in some or another way, um, um, I don't know whether this is an English word, relativate, uh, make it relative, the one thing, to, to, to not as the strong distinction of outside and inside, but try to, to, um, to make the inside uh, more, more exterior, and at the same time try to make the exterior more um, with the feeling of an inside. Next, uh, next picture. Uh, uh, here you see the working space, and uh, although the, the construction as such is made uh, very simply uh, as a repetition of, of prefabricated elements, uh, which by the way has nothing to do with structuralism, I mean the word structure is, 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 is used in so many ways, uh, I mean, but I, I go into that maybe later. Uh, a very formally, uh, as precise as possibly made um, structure of, of elements um, that allow people to, um, to be very free. So, uh, um, in fact, the formal order accommodates the, the informal. And this is a misunderstanding I want to take away from the first beginning on people <coughs> listening to the word structuralism, they think, ah, structuralism, that bum, 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 you know, cutting the world, uh, controlling the world. It is the opposite. What I try to do is to make a, a structural minimum, so to say, minimum in the sense that it incites people to, to be more free. And you see the result, which I must admit is very Dutch. And I'm not sure the people keep <laughs> saying this is only possible in Holland. <laughs> and well, happy enough, there's something possible in, 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 in Holland. Uh, I know it's a Dutch <laughs> theme. Next, please. Uh, talking about um, uh, office buildings, this is a uh, working model of the office building. Uh, I, uh, which is now under construction, which I'm making for the Ministry of Social Affairs in Holland. Happily, happy enough, it is not for the for the Ministry of uh, of uh, what is it, War uh, and um, and uh, Arms. I don't know how you call it, Ministry of Defense. I think <laughs> you call it. Uh, but it is for the Social Affairs. But it's still a ministry, and it's still 2,000 employees who. Uh, which, uh, other than the Central Beheer office building, uh, where they wanted to work in large spaces, sort of not quite office landscape, because it was, uh, there are too many columns to make it a landscape, say an, an office wood. Uh, um, um, unlike that, in, in, uh, in this building, they all want to have their own rooms. And it is under construction, it is still in the, in the, um, uh, in the process, uh, in the process of of, of um, deci uh, decision making, so I'm not going to tell you in what way we tackle the the problem of everybody his own room, but we have a sort of idea for that, which I hope in a couple of years I can show you slides in what way that that works out. Anyway, what you can perceive from this picture is that it mainly is built up from again a repetition of the same elements, <coughs> however larger islands, and you can imagine why, because we have this, 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 this uh, own route, but without corridors, and 
it is the whole building is um, how do you say uh, uh, pierced by uh, a big a big alley a big main street with glass roof you cannot see but you must believe me which is <laughs> which is atrium like but not just an atrium uh, but an, an, an atrium like main street and a completely decentralized uh, communication system in such a way that all these buildings these parts work as buildings of their own with their own uh, um, um, circulation system which makes it uh, I must say it once more uh, um, um, I hope huh? um, this is all based on hope and trust uh, uh, um, uh, a small town um, um, with um, a conglomerate which is a conglomerate of office buildings in fact what we try to do is take the uh, take the massiveness, the, the big uh, uh, scale out of the thing and, and I'm impossible. I always <coughs> try to make whatever I'm doing it in such a way that um, you can uh, read from the building, from the, in, from the outside as well as from the inside, uh, what the measure of uh, people is and not just it this big box and say, oh, we are impressed and we know that there are people working in it uh, and well let's not talk about that but we are just impressed and for me is being impressed is is not the main thing I'm not such an artist and I'm not uh, the type of architect that considers architecture as a piece of art I mean uh, this is an academic question, uh, is it art or is it not art, but uh, too many architects, in my opinion, are busy with gigantic sculptures, and they are very powerful because they are always bigger than a, than a, than a sculpture, but, uh, but, but, uh, but than, than a sculptor. These poor sculptors, even when they make the most fantastic big sculptures, they're always very tiny. Um, 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 uh, uh, when, when you put them next to a, a piece of architecture, so these architects think, <laughs> we are big, <laughs> and, you know, but big does not always mean beautiful, you know, <laughs> and uh, uh, most of the, most of the, 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 the sculptures architects make are quite lousy, I must say, <laughs> and due to the, to, the, to, the, to the architectural magazines who want to publish them, in, in I don't know how many uh, uh, color, you know, uh, give this uh, among the in crowd of architects the feeling that he is very good, he is genius, he is not so good as the other one. But that's a very small group of people who are considering architect, architects in that way. I mean, we must realize that, uh, that uh, um, we are putting our big sculptures in the street. Well, let's have the lecture and not just this talk around it. Next, uh, please. Uh, you see, this is just a, a one floor in which you can see uh, a little bit. I don't want you to see too much. We are just in, 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 in the, uh, doing the building at this moment and uh, I'm not sure it will be good. I, I'm quite sure, but not, not quite, you know. So, <laughs> uh, uh, so, so uh, we, must, uh, we must do it first. It's based on a very simple scheme of columns that are in fact like soldiers in a, in a grid iron, all these columns, you know. That there is a diagonal system. The main system is, is, is in the diagonal and, the, and, the, and there is an um, uh, uh, well, there's a hierarchy, this is a, 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 how, you, how you say, a, a next uh, system, um, which is not subordinate, but, uh, you know, of columns in that direction, which support, um, um, uh, in the, not in the literal sense, but also in the literal sense, the, the main street, and the whole thing is to, to, to reconcile this, this two, um, these two directions. So there's a very formal and, and very 
um, 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 how you say, um, rationalistic um, um, way of thinking behind um, um, a very formal uh, attitude uh, in what way we, we build with this two or three uh, elements. And uh, hopefully in such a way that it will give this large um, 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 incitement for um, change and and um, and um, this uh, how do you say uh, distinction between the different parts and I try to exploit the differences between sections in this building and I try not to exploit the uniformness, which I think most architects do by just making 32 floors in the same way. They in fact exploit the, the, the uniformness. And I try to tackle, to, to tickle, to incite people to do something different from, 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 from their neighbors. Next, uh, next slide. This is uh, all a very Dutch theme and in the most famous uh, Dutch painting, I mean you have, this is the second or the first famous of the famous uh, paintings, uh, well known in the whole world, 18th century, Vermeer, had the famous little street of Vermeer. You see already um, something about the way of thinking of the Dutch. This is the front door and you see the servant uh, knitting or doing something. You see, the little street is in fact this. This is the, the title of the painting, it refers to this little street where you see a servant. You see not only the front door, but you see also the, the back door. You, you're not only seeing the owner, the owners, but you see always the servants. So the, the Dutch uh, uh, big painters, uh, so to say monumental painters, are always painting servants. And you see this, this zone in front of the house where there are uh, always dogs and people and there are always small benches to sit. Not that the climate is so, so perfect in Holland, but for, so, for one reason or another, um, we always have this, this possibility to sit outside your, your house and they could have, uh, I could explain you a whole story about uh, in what way uh, this is, uh, this street is as much of an insight as the inside of the building as well, but then I'm going to deviate into another lecture. So I keep just uh, um, my mouth saying that uh, there is this theme, this Dutch theme of, uh, of underlining the informal um, 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 at the same time as the formal. Next. <coughs> and you see this bench in front of the house. There's another bench in front of the house, which is uh, in, in our age, and I don't know how many people know where it is, but it is a quite, uh, quite um, well-known house. It's, uh, it's the Rietveld house. And uh, you always um, uh, see these pictures of the, the Rietveld house uh, shown as a sort of big model, you know, like, uh, um, and it is also, s you, you can, can also buy it and make the model. It's always this model, model, this model, you know, and also this model uh, uh, quality, uh, the abstract quality, the, the, the quality of being a sort of three-dimensional uh, painting of Mondrian, which is underlined. And this sort of pieces, this is just one detail. I could go around this building and make 50 slides of small things, you would think they are taken somewhere in a farmer house uh, um, uh, at the periphery of the IJsselmeer in Holland. All these motifs you find in the old tourist cities, uh, um, uh, um, villages, um, are in, in this house, in, in this, uh, in this um, res respect. It's very, very Dutch and it was for the, the, the wife, how do you say, the, 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 not the official wife, but the, the friend uh, of, of, uh, of, uh, of Rietveld, who was 
sitting here and Rickfeld was walking behind that thing and it cannot be more bourgeois than, <laughs> than this. They were just uh, with the window open having a little bit of contact with each other. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know. I mean, Van Kohlhaas would hate this, of course. Huh? But I, I hate it too. But it's not work, you know. I hate it too, but when you are making shoes, I mean, you, you should not hate the fact that people are walking on it. You know, this is, this is, this is what happens with shoes, you know. So I made this into my profession. And therefore, my profession may, uh, may, uh, may sound a little bit different or may look a little bit different from what uh, most architects are, are, are telling and, uh, and doing. Next. Uh, well, this is the house. And as I told you before, every point of it <coughs> is habitable. Every point is in, in the abstract sense of it is made perfectly but also in the sense of having the right measure to put, uh, the, to put a, a chair outside in a place where it's not too windy and that sort of bourgeois things, you know, which, is, uh, which architecture, in my opinion, uh, um, uh, is, uh, is, is all about. And maybe this is just a curse to say that here, you know, in this. Uh, atmosphere where it is considered to be something higher, uh, but uh, okay, let's let's talk about that later. Uh, next slide. Uh, going back to oh no, this is to prove. This is to prove to you <laughs> that the Rietveld House is different from what you thought. You didn't know that there were these Dutch doors, and of course there were that there are Dutch doors in in, in the Rietveld House. And it was that, that, that uh, uh, you know, I could now uh, uh, follow it up with some story about uh, the, the, the wife of Rietveld talking with the milkman, etc., etc. I'm, I'm not going to disturb you with the stories, but this is, this is uh, in fact, what is going on. Dutch doors, horse doors, you know. Uh, so not only this perfect, not only this perfect composition uh, where everything works like a, a painting of Mondrian, but also this. I'm not denying the other quality. Well, my, the, the theme of my story is that not to choose between formal order and daily life, but to say that you have both and that we try to make a formal order in such a way that it accommodates for the daily life. But, 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 but not just a form in order to accommodate for some architectural friends and, and some editors and publishers of, uh, of, of color photographs of your work. That is not, not enough, I think. Next. Uh, this is my own work, not as good as Rietveld, but it is, it is another step, and you understand where my influences are coming from. It is a part of a very low cost, I must say, uh, you know, you have the Lloyds building, but we have very low-cost housing, <laughs> uh, uh, which is just for nothing. And you have to fight, to fight, to get this sort of bench from the last money you, you, you can, you can uh, uh, being very clever, you know. So the last money we spent mm -hmm. to make this overcovered area uh, a little bit in the tradition of Vermeer, and have this bench, you know, the last thing where the contractor did something wrong with that. You have to do it over. Uh, oh, but, but that's, a, that's a disaster. For me. Okay, okay, you can leave it, but then you have to make this bench. Oh, no, 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 In this way, you know, in this way, we have all sorts of tricks and pitfalls for contractors to have them make, make these stupid benches and that sort of things, you know. And what it is, is with this Dutch doors, it's an old lady and she has her husband is also old and maybe ill and lying in the bed and she has a little contact with him and she, and she can listen to the telephone uh, and uh, therefore it's very important to have this door open. She had not yet fixed the lamp but she has this uh, thing where she can fix her own lamp 
and of course I know how to design a lamp, but first of all we had no money to make it, the only money was left was just to make this. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's very funny, but it's not, it's not meant to be a joke, I mean I, I'm very happy that you're laughing, but it's not a joke, it's just the way we are. And uh, then you see that they have the mat outside, which uh, means that uh, somewhere this is going to become part of the territory of the, of the, of the inside. And, and I think the significance of this zone is that it, that it uh, brings the inside um, outside. Uh, this is an old people house. <coughs> next, next picture, please. Uh, and I cannot show you the whole, the whole building. I just show you glimpses of what I have done. And it might be nice to explain you something about symmetry, because symmetry is one of the main dishes of formal order. And there's a lot of discussion uh, um, uh, up to what ex uh, 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 to what extent one one uh, can make is allowed to make symmetry or not. You see, this is quite a symmetrical building, except for this chess man who was uh, sitting here. And these are technical, and I could not make uh, another set uh, here. But for the rest, it's quite uh, symmet uh, symmetrical, and it is uh, just the the, the 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 rooms of the people with this big. Uh, bow windows, uh, with, uh, which are uh, also uh, a possibility to show that you are different from, from the one who is living here, because this is maybe used afterwards as storage, this is used for plants, this is used for, uh, I don't know. Uh, so um, it, it's, it's an addition uh, that is very um, uh, nice for the people to use, and also a means of getting the, the 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 image of the of the of the dif, uh, difference of of of, uh, of of people behind this there is a big communal room which is going up to here I'm not going to show it to you uh, I, I, I just tell you there's a big communal room behind the uh, space behind here and you see this balcony and the bow window or bay window and, uh, and the canopy, which are not symmetrical. That's very strange. I mean, next picture. Uh, 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 an, an, uh, a reasonable architect would have said, well, we make, uh, of course, two uh, bow windows and a nice balcony in the middle, because in this whole composition you cannot, you cannot make this, this sort of uh, distortion. Uh, or shall we make maybe one bow window in the middle <laughs> and two balconies at the side? <laughs> you know, it's very uh, to hell. I, I, I just want one balcony and one bow window <laughs> of, 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 of reasonable size and not two, two small bow windows because the size is, is, is made by uh, the dimension of tables and uh, the two tables opposite each other and people, the maximum of people who can look out. And the balcony is made in such a way that you have an, an area where you can sit completely outside and when you are hesitating because the weather is not that, that good, you can also choose to sit uh, in different conditions. Uh, that, that means under this, under this canopy. What I try to do is analyze the conditions the way uh, they, they have to be. And, and then the consequence has been one bow window, one big terrace, and not two terraces, one bow window, or what, you know, I mean, happy enough for, for architects, there are men and women, so that they can make in the symmetrical systems the, the men's rooms at one side and the women's rooms at, at, the, at, at the other side, you know. Uh, in all buildings, in all symmetrical buildings, you see the toilets for women at the one side and the men. I don't know whether there's a system in it that the men are always at that side and the women are always at that side. But, you know, that is very happy uh, for, for architects. But this functions like making a terrace and making a bow window. I try to, to uh, um, uh, pay justice to, to what the function, what the, 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 the consequently the size of the different parts, elements, uh, uh, need to, to be, need to have, and, and, and next thing is, 
to organize them in the right way. Next uh, picture. And uh, uh, so, so I'm going to break the symmetry next uh, of the building. Um, I learned this uh, also from a quite famous Dutch building, which is the Open Air School by Duiker, and not Duiker, but Duiker. Um, it doesn't matter, we all understand what you mean. Uh, <laughs> uh, which is, which is a very uh, pure and nicely uh, symmetrical building, but I always wondered uh, from from small child, I, I, I used to live in that area, and said so, uh, so before I I decided to become an architect, I wondered already why this symmetrical building has one gymnastics room uh, quite uh, asymmetrically built uh, built to it, and um, afterwards I started to to analyze this building. And uh, although I did not know Dauker, because I, I was not born when he died, I think, but uh, I can imagine what happened. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven classrooms. So he was asked to fulfill a program of seven classrooms. That's not easy. I mean, <laughs> can, cannot it be six or eight? Because when I, have, when I have eight, I can make at least two groups of four, and well, so many other possibilities with two, huh? four <laughs> groups of two. And when it's six, it's even better because I can, I can make two groups of three, or, or three groups of, 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 of two. But seven? What can I do with seven? I mean, when, when I, um, I, as a teacher in the school, I'm giving my, my, my students uh, uh, the, the assignment to make a school with uh, seven or with five, well, five is easier because then you can always make uh, two, two, and then, and then one in the middle. I mean, that, that is still possible, but seven is the most difficult assignment you can, you can imagine. So Dauke uh, had to make seven classrooms, oh yes, and one gymnastics room, you know. So he started to make, and uh, he made uh, the building symmetrical as long as he could make it symmetrically and then he had to add this one classroom and he added the gymnastics room at that side everything functionally precise and just as it was uh, had to be now the next is that the gymnastics room is very high high uh, uh, ceiling so he had to put it a little bit in the in the bottom but not too far because the water is quite near in Holland uh, and so you cannot go very deep and that is going to be very expensive and it's going to leak, et, et cetera. And um, he had to lift, so consequently he had to lift the whole building a little bit up to get it under because he cannot afford, allow this gymnastics rooms to sit in front of the windows of the, of the classroom which is sitting there. So you have to do that. So he lifted that up and then he said, oh, but that's very good because this classroom is in a quite unfortunate condition that it's too near the playing children here. So it's very nice. Uh, is this a blackboard now? Huh? Yeah. This is not a blackboard. Is this a blackboard? No. no. Well, but anyway, <laughs> he, they are sitting and you have the, 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 the balustrade and then it's going f further down such that the children here uh, can stand without saying, well, no, you are working and I'm playing. <laughs> so they are doing the mathematics and the people who are playing are, are, are just up to there, you know. So that's quite precise, quite good in the functional sense uh, and in the sense of uh, how to to, to uh, when you think of, 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 of children doing mathematics and, and children playing. So that's fine. Okay, that's one story. The other story is that you come in symmetrically in between the two legs of the building, very nicely, you know, as it ought to be. And then for some reason or another, the door is asymmetrically put in the building. Uh, any decent architect would have taken this door. Hey, you know, whatever will happen 
we'll force it in the middle, you know, and push everything again, you know, because it's impossible. You come in here, you know, and, and, and then the door should be in the middle. You know. But uh, of course it's not true, because when you are uh, received by the building in the ordinary, uh, no, in an, in an, in a, how do you say, in a good, uh, symmetrical way, of course, since our heads are not fixed like this, you know, that we only can look in front of us, since our heads can make that move, it is no problem that the door is there. In fact, it's very, uh, it's almost poetic to do it in such a way that you are symmetrically received, and then you are in, in fact you are, so to say, uh, in, and then, okay, there is the door, and you go in quite informally. But there has been a reason for that, and that is that he had to make a small stairs up to the platform for this, for this classroom before he could go up on his main staircase. Next picture. It's a very large picture, but it's sufficiently interesting to show you. You see, this is the normal floor, normal ground, uh, 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 plan, uh, floor plan. And here you see, you come in, it, in fact, you, uh, he, he needed to make this small stairs before he could so come to this platform, or from this platform, the main stairs goes up. You see, to make this stairs, he had to shift the entry to the side. Well, what, what can we learn from this, from this whole story? But what we can learn is that darker, uh, um, uh, composed, or let's start, let's say, organized the elements of his building in a way that was just, uh, um, well, composed his elements in the way they should be organized. So composition and organization becomes one thing, you know. So the organization asks him to make that, that, that uh, gymnastics room, the organization asked him, etc., etc., and he is not forcing his elements into a formal order, although yet he is very formal in the main structure, because it's as pure as pu purity can be, as you see how his columns and the position of the beams, you cannot read it from this, this, this drawing. But it's one of the most pure buildings in a formal sense you can think of. Yet, is he not afraid to, as soon as organization is asking it, to shift elements in order to have them in the right place. And in fact, that is the way also a Mondrian painting is, is organized. Next. Uh, here you see the small stairs which, did, uh, which, which uh, um, uh, obliged him to make the entrance uh, um, shifted. And this is the main structure, you know, um, uh, exactly the middle of the, of the building, and the main structure exposed and, and precise as, as, as you can think of. Next. Um, going back to my own buildings, making a jump to Germany, I am uh, also talking about the organization of elements. This is housing, a housing project, and what I try to do <coughs> is two things. Making uh, big balconies, which have the right conditions for people, what I consider the right conditions, and making very open, glazed staircases. First the balconies. The balconies are made in such a way, are organized in such a way that not only you have one intimate uh, zone, but you also have a zone which is higher, which is going through two floors. So if you want to be alone and read your book and don't be disturbed by, by these terrible neighbors, you go back into this intimate room and you have a shield, uh, how do you say, an, uh, um, something that protects you from the, from the gossip and the, <laughs> and the, and the eyes of, of, of your neighbor. You know, and the same thing is true for this balcony. Uh, so, so when you are, want to be alone, you sit here. When you want to be more in the open air, 
you do one <coughs> step or two steps forward and you have this larger balcony where you're very extrovert because then uh, uh, your neighbor who's standing here is asking you what, what, uh, what you think of the weather and, and that sort of thing. And also uh, your neighbor here is already waiting for, for talking with you. So you have these two possibilities to be private and to be in contact with your neighbors. And uh, the, other, the other theme is the open staircase which is very glazed and in, in, instead of making, uh, making your staircase in, the, in one of these dark corners of your plan, which you were not able to, 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 to solve, uh, 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 which is the appropriate place for most of staircases, you know, where you have, the, well, it's clear enough, huh? uh, I wanted to make it into a sort of vert vertical street, uh, you know, um, um, uh, yeah, a vertical street, as open as possible. Next. Um, you see, uh, with a big landing where children can play and, and just, uh, just glaze. Next. Uh, I hope you see the, the plan. You see these two balconies, they are um, um, overlapping each other in such a way that, that the one has this intimate zone and this outside zone, the other, al al alternating, has this um, uh, zone and this uh, uh, intimate zone and this outside zone. As for the staircases, there is something quite interesting, quite interesting theme involved, which is the fact that I made two front doors, and it's in um, and and, and um, it, it, it's very uh, very uh, funny because. In Germany, they want me, you, me, with your open stories. You cannot do that in Germany. That's just Dutch. And we mm. want be, to be behind shutters and behind uh, things. Okay, so they got a, um, an, um, a, 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 closed, a closed front door. But here they got a zone, a sort of porch, with a glazed front door. And this, this part is, this is part of the staircase. But uh, in the square meterage of the house, it belongs to the house. So they found out that they paid for it. <laughs> and they wanted a lock, a lock on that door. So they have two locks now, one lock here and one lock there. <laughs> and then we paid for it, so it's our, our thing, you know. And they start to put uh, nice pictures on the, on, on the thing and put their, their shoes down and, um, and have some... Uh, mats and things, you know. And then the, the next, the next uh, thing that, that's happening, it's all very bourgeois, you know. That, uh, Holland is a bourgeois country, so it's going to be a bourgeois lecture. I, I'm sorry, well, we have also Remcola, so don't, don't worry. Uh, uh, however, uh, the, the, the children from, from, from this house, they, 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 they are a bit uh, difficult. And uh, the mother says, well, what about uh, opening the door? Then you can look outside. And the child is very happy. Uh, she or he can look outside. And the same thing happens at the other, happens at the other <laughs> side. So the children are looking to each other. So a sort of social contact takes place. And there are all sorts of reasons to open that, that door. And the strange thing is that this area becomes, uh, according to the situation, more part of the, according to the specific situation and changing uh, situation after situation, part, more part of the staircase or more part of, of the house. And it's a real overlapping zone, it's a real threshold zone, uh, which is, uh, uh, belongs to both at the same time. Next uh, picture. And, uh, um, what you see here is, uh, in fact, it's a very funny picture. You are, uh, people are laughing when there's nothing to laugh, and they're not laughing when it's really <laughs> very funny. <laughs> but I'll tell you what is so funny. The, 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 so funny is that they have two mats. <laughs> <laughs> because they, that is the proof that they hesitate which one is the real front door. You know? <laughs> And they have these two mats, and they, they have this zone, you know, which is sometimes part of the, of the, 
of the staircase and, and sometimes part of the of the house and they open this door and there is going to be very uh, very uh, uh, large openness between uh, opposite houses and consequently uh, a lot of uh, social contact contact and I must say although I know that the influence of architecture on the life is very limited that it helps the social contact in the sense that it uh, um, that people are um, well we should not make architecture that forces people to communicate so we should make enough uh, uh, protection uh, the, uh, the one uh, from, from the other so not to force as to not to force people to communicate but we should also not force people to not communicate and that is the thing so I want to make an architecture that not only not forces people to communicate, but um, also not forces them to not communicate, to give them the, 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 uh, their own choice, to make conditions, to organize your building in such a way that this choice to the people is uh, either to, to do this or, or to do that, to be on myself or to be together with the others according to what my situation is next uh, this is Berlin uh, it's a little bit mirror wise but doesn't matter uh, it is um, 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 a project uh, in the IBA um, in the IBA uh, organization and they asked me to finish this this block and on first sight I, I thought aha finally I can make uh, such a nice start pointed block like everybody <laughs> does and I also had this dream to make that but when I looked properly I saw that there was already a, a church sitting <laughs> on this point so no chance for me so this is the project which is the quickest made of all my projects on the first side I said well the only thing we can do is 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 close the block finish the block in such a way that space as much as possible uh, um, uh, so to say uh, floats as far as space can float but that's the, the sort of architect jargon you may understand uh, uh, floats in between the, the this building and then of course because the well you know we all talk about space but nobody knows what space is it is something we some holy thing we all talk about and we all know what it is but nobody can really express uh, in, a, in a more or less scientific way what space is happy enough you know but we could we can we can try to approach the idea of space from different directions and that's it and that's what we are doing you know uh, in the middle there is a sort of inner court because we needed more houses and I think that's very good because this space uh, this room would be too large would have been too large however there's the danger for those people who know about berlin they know that berlin has this famous or uh, what's the word uh, notorious uh, inner courts where the poor people are living in the, and, and there, there, there are whole series sequences of inner courts and the the, the more you are behind uh, the, the more uh, you are poor and that is so it's a it's a quite a peculiar thing to make inner courts in the in the Berlin situation however I tried to do it but I thought my inner court is completely different because it is publicly um, uh, um, 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 accessible and you can go through one two three four five six seven uh, uh, um, gate. So it's part of the public street. So when you want to make a shortcut, you go here and you and, and you go this way. People do that or make that shortcut, and that's uh, uh, um, consequently quite different type of inner court. Next, uh, I uh, try to make for some reason or another they are all mirrorized. I mean, I know that the cars in England uh, drive left side, but I did not know that the, the slide projectors are doing the same. 
I hope I will not be in, 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 in trouble. Well, anyway, uh, so you have to, to in, in reality it's different, but okay. Uh, here you see the, the block, and, and uh, I, I uh, worked uh, in plaster, which is against my, my, uh, my character, because I want to, uh, as a sort of uh, um, pupil of Berlach, uh, the Dutch uh, tradition, I want to show the materials as they are, I want to make readable how it is built, and therefore I make, uh, uh, what is it, lintels? What is the, the lintels? Eh? Uh, lintels, I want to show how the structure works and I uh, somewhere hate the abstraction of just a good composition of holes in a wall. What do you think? Shall we make that hole a little bit like this? Consequently the people cannot look out in this way, but have to look out in that way. But you know, it's just nicer in the building. So you get all sorts of houses where you have uh, funny windows where you can look like this or where you can look out like this, or where you can look out like this, because the architect, you know, like Mondrian of the first easel, was just making... What do you think? Shall we make it a little bit more like this? <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to show, try to make uh, um, uh, how, it, how it is... Uh, so, so uh, we have this sort of articulation of the concrete in the plaster. Next, uh, the same theme as the castle houses. Uh, so I won't go into it. However, uh, uh, a little bit more transparent for all sorts of reasons and uh, some difficulties. People are asking me why did 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 you put the column in front of the window? Well, that is. I think that's very nice to, to have the, the, the window frame independent of the, of the column, you know. Uh, and it is, of course, a sort of uh, a constraint to always, when you make a column in the facade, to have the two windows like this, you know. And the column standing <laughs> in between these, these two windows. And when I try to make the, the column itself, you know, freely standing, and being seen from the inside and the window itself uh, uh, behind it. It's two independent uh, things. But somewhere people say, you are putting a column in front of the window. I did my best to do that. <laughs> yeah. Next, eh? Next. And then you see what I promised you, the way you can go in and have all these gateways and the same glazed uh, staircases. And you see these very high columns, which are, which are uh, almost pretty, I think. And, uh, well, I could have designed them. I mean, I did design them. <laughs> but, but, uh, you understand what I mean? Uh, next. And here you see the scheme as it is. And um, I told you the story. Uh, in Kassel, I tried to make uh, enlarged uh, landings for children to play. Uh, and uh, there are no children that play there, but the, 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 the grown-ups uh, are very happy to sit there. Anyway, in this way, I had no money to make landings and something on the roof. In this project, I tried to exploit uh, um, some place, communal place, for all the people who are living at one staircase, stair, stair street. Huh? Uh, 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 up um, up um, above. And I don't know what, what's going to happen with it. Uh, 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 I have no experience uh, so, so far. I have seen that people are starting to do it, and the Berlin people are very uh, uh, much uh, working with plants, and they love to do things together. So that's going uh, okay. For the rest, you see on the scheme, uh, uh, little steel and glass canopies, which are not on my slides, for the simple fact that there was a big fight to get them, a bit the same story as uh, what I was telling you from the, with the benches, that the, the, the contractor did not want to make them, and he thought it was nonsense, it was already uh, sufficiently beautiful, why should we uh, still add more, these, these architects always want more, but at a certain moment I got him, 
and he had to make them. And, uh, and, but, but my photographs are still, um, well, I have one photograph uh, with it. I'm going to show you afterwards. Next. Uh, in the, in the, in the inner court, so here, you know, they are missing all this beautiful uh, um, glass uh, roofs to protect people a little more in this uh, balcony. Here you see an, uh, a sandbox, which is uh, next um, made by my, my daughter, who is also an architect. Next, please. And um, she was going uh, with some Gaudi books to the, to the people and say, here, look, look, look what is possible, and why don't we make uh, the sand pit in the same way? And uh, the, the people started to say, we cannot do that. But at a certain moment next, they started to, uh, to, to work on it. Uh, first the small children, and then the, the larger and the grown-ups. And uh, she left, and they didn't even uh, uh, realize that she left. And now the whole project is, uh, is going on. And uh, so it's a sort of middle-aged uh, um, uh, workshop, middle-aged workshop where people are doing hand, uh, hand work. I think this is a very nice thing, and it is, it is I mean, I could have made, made a very nice uh, thing myself. I don't need the people to do it for me, but the people don't need me to do it for them, you know, that's the <laughs> other side of the medal. And what is important is that a an, 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 an sandbox given to them by the architect, they said, hmm, well, it's not quite what we want, but okay. And they don't look after it, you know. When they are making it themselves, it's their sandbox. And they made it in their way. They look after it when a dog is coming. Uh, <laughs> they say, well, out of my sandbox. And that's a very important story about appropriation. And I just, uh, 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 I'm just mentioning it, but uh, lots of my work are just based on that idea of how can you get more appropriation by the, by the people. And consequently, my buildings, when I, uh, I left, uh, are not uh, are going to be completely disturbed because people have, uh, well, they are disturbed. Of course, they are disturbed in the sense that they are not good for the magazines anymore. But they are going to, to flower in the way the people want to have them. And of course, architects hate that. But I, I'm like a shoemaker, you know. I, I like uh, new shoes, but I, uh, but, but I try to make them not only beautiful, that they, are, that they look beautiful, but also that, that, that you walk on them. I, I cannot decide, I cannot not, not, not force people to walk in a certain direction. That's their, their problem. Next. Uh, here you see that slide uh, with the addition of the, of the, the steel and the glass because it's the, these people here have their intimate place uh, thanks to, the, to the, the next balcony. Uh, but these people uh, have the, the free air, so they need to have this. And I think it's a very important uh, addition to the, to the whole thing. And it's just making this uh this places into into sort of cubicle ah let's not talk about i like it i just like it but uh, i see it for the first time so i go i talk about it too too long but uh, but all the balconies have it now next uh and here you see that these long columns uh are not just i mean they they are invented by uh, by the fact that we had this sticking out, is projecting out balconies, and they needed a column. But after all, when you compare it with these columns of this, this, uh, this, this uh, classicistic order there, I think they go quite, quite well along. And what I found out, I did not design that consciously, is that we introduced, in fact, in this housing project, an, uh, not only verticality, but also uh, a larger measure, and it takes out that boring, <coughs> that boring measure of all housing, 
which is always this, 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 uh, how, how many feet you say, na uh, uh, ten feet, nine feet high, you know, uh, that we make. And I think it is quite important to have this larger um, measure in the, in the facade, uh, uh, which, which, is, which is just an element um, um, that, that reflects, so to say, the whole and not just, uh, just uh, the apartments uh, as such. Next. Uh, the other project we are doing in, in uh, Berlin is the film house, and by some miracle, this is not mineralized. I think I put it in mineralized, and consequently, no, the other one was also okay. I don't know what, what it was, uh, something. Let's, let's look out of the window whether the, now the cars drive at the other side. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is the film center, a uh, film academy, an old leftover of an, um, um, uh, 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 an, uh, an uh, Berlin hotel, a big studio, uh, a library, um, and, and a museum, uh, all for film. And I won this competition uh, because I was the only one who did not make a big box around the old building because everybody was, was agreed that this, this, this stub, this leftover of the old hotel should, should stay. Uh, but they all made a big box where they put the whole program in. And I was the only one who, uh, um, who um, distinguished the different groups that were involved and they all uh, had made the decision to, to live together, but they were all were very happy that they uh, um, uh, at least had their own, their own house. And uh, so there are different houses, an articulation in different groups that all together make, one could say, a sort of small town. And uh, which is, uh, which, uh, and they have very good communications um, um, uh, with each other. And I'm going to make windows in such a way that they also have the right uh, relationships uh, with each other, so that they can say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that sort of things are very important. And uh, uh, you see, there are there are very autonomous forms. In fact, uh, 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 you must be very careful when you use this, this autonomous cylindrical forms because they tend to be, to be castles. They, te they tend to become so, so um, autonomous that they are not accessible anymore. But as you look right, then you see that I cut off pieces, you know. I cut off here uh, underneath, here just a part of, and here a part of. And the leftover space is quite a decent rectangular uh, space, so I use the elements um, 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 like uh, fruits of a Cezanne uh, painting and uh, Natur Mort, what is it, a still life of Cezanne, where you see the, the fruits uh, and um, uh, where you see that Cezanne puts as, as much emphasis on what is in between the fruits than on the fruits uh, themselves. Until Cezanne, all the still life painters painted more or less beautiful fruits. And from Cezanne on, they decided to not, or decided, I don't know, uh, felt, they did, uh, paint not only the fruits, but also what is in between, which is in fact uh, the relation between things, which is the very uh, heart of the 20th century thinking not uh, concentrate on the objects as such, but concentrate on the relation of the object, or objects. And what I try to do is make the objects in such a way that the relation of them is stressed. Next. Uh, you can see that a little bit in the, in the, in the plan, where you see that uh, the zone, the space, in between, he has no, uh, uh, another round form, which is the, which is the, 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 the big uh, cinema, uh, movie theater, which is in it. You see the, that, in fact, all these this round forms end up 
in a sort of decent, big open air uh, movie theater, which you can cover with a canvas roof and 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 play. Uh, another thing is which which is uh, and this is going to be executed. This plan and we are going to elaborate it now. The only thing that is not executed is my proposal uh, how to um, um, how to deal with the old building. You see, it's a very formal, uh, uh, formal, um, um, quite symmetrical structure. Uh, and what I try to do is is uh, inter interfere interference interfere it with. Uh, a new structure which is completely denying, so to say, the formality of the old, uh, hoping that you will have this tension of the free uh, flowing uh, plan uh, of the additions and, and the old formal structure. So you come in in the, in the, in the old uh, uh, symmetrical way and immediately you are um, you know, this is also a lesson from, from, from the open air school in Duiker. Uh, you are led in this way, and of course the point of gravity of the plan uh, uh, of the whole is not there, but is there. And you are, you are directed to the lifts, and you are directed to this place, etc. But they are so nostalgic about this building, they don't want it, they just want to, to redo it in the same way as it was. And so, so I have no chance to do this part of the building. Uh, next, uh, uh, the other plan, I very, uh, I, I, I feel a, a, a little bit sorry for that I did not win this, this competition. Uh, this is uh, the Gemilde Gallery, this is the, the picture gallery of Berlin, where the famous uh, picture collection is supposed to come, and it was an, uh, an, uh, a competition, and um, um, what they have is already this network of buildings and um, they thought it was too much of a network and they want to finish it with a, a larger scale, more, more straight on uh, picture gallery and the idea is that a uh, sculpture gallery uh, com comes later. And it was a closed competition and I did not win. Uh, I, I feel very bad that the scheme that won is just an ordinary, well, well designed, okay, nothing to say against it, uh, picture gallery, but what I was trying to do is something completely different. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what, you know, the idea is that there's a, a big inner court, I just uh, keep the old building as it, uh, as a, well, old building, I mean it's, it's still in, in uh, under construction, but they're going to finish it. <laughs> and these two, these two uh, uh, quite decent, uh, sophisticated houses uh, to remain, and uh, this big inner court, and I'll show you next slide what my main proposal of the thing is. Uh, that was to make a, a system of parallel walls in such a way that you can uh, walk through the picture gallery uh, through alleys as it were and you have these alleys and these alleys go always at, they end up in the inner court at one side and they end up in a, in a transparent um, um, skin where you can see the town at the other end and you can go uh, since in the program uh, it was asked to make the collection uh, accessible in a chronological way, you can go chronological, you can just follow this alleys and then find you, well, I did it wrong, I have to go back now. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so you come here and you go there and you can go uh, around and all the cloak rooms and everything are already made here and uh, you, you, you have this circuit, you know, which is okay also in the, in the, in the surface system. And uh, the idea of the thing is that, that not only can you do it in the chronological sense, but there are holes in the wall. Holes in such a way that you can look in that direction. Here the system turns, so if you look here, you look all the way. 
you look here, you look all the way through. But not only that, you can also look in that direction. And the difference of what happens to you is that there are also slight, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, 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 change levels, uh, change of levels, you know, slightly is the level uh, changed by uh, three steps. So you are going in this alley, you're walking uh, gradually up, and when you walk, and when you look in this direction, you look onto um, pieces that are on the same level. So you are looking, so you're seeing the same level. When you're looking in that direction, you're looking up to small ramps, and you are seeing it in a very steep way, in a steeper way than, than normally. So what it is, is in fact, it is a landscape with walls and, 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 and views and, and walls with, with, with paintings. And I thought that was quite an appropriate way to see paintings. And at the end of the alley, you, have the, you, 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 you look to the, to the, to the town, and, and at the other end, you have an intimate place where you can drink outside when the weather is okay. Next. And I thought it was quite, uh, quite, quite appropriate. Here you see a section through uh, three of these alleys, and you see that the whole equipment uh, and also the surface uh, cir uh, circulation circuit is, is on top, and you have, of course, everything you need for lighting, or filters, etc., etc. And you, uh, the walls, you have this, this, this uh, uh, looking through holes, you know, difficult to draw in perspective. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you can also, uh, and the walls, the, the solid walls are not really solid because they are with panels, and you can take out panels if you like, and then have a very big view in the landscape. So what it is, it is a system of uh, very simple elements which are flexible in the sense that according to what you want uh, at a certain moment, you can change it uh, when you are museum staff, and uh, according to what you want, you can make your own uh, journey uh, um, uh, as far as you are a visitor. Next. Uh, the main uh, inspiration, well, that's not true, but it is a sort of association with the Louvre, which is of course awful because the paintings are hanging three or four levels, you cannot see the paintings that are hanging here. But the idea of having uh, um, a, a, a picture gallery in terms of very long alleys, I think, is, is much better than the labyrinth of rooms where you never can find what you, what you are looking for. It is, a, it, 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 is, it is the introduction of a, very, of, a, of a very clear system where you can, um, so to say, sharp cut in different directions. And, uh, and I thought that was a quite good idea. I mean, this is, of course, not very appropriate. We made that all glass and, and so on. Next. You see in this uh, picture, the idea of making, so this is a real structuralistic plan in, the, in, the, in, the, in terms that there's a main structure which consists of this idea, uh, which can be interpreted in different ways, which offers, which incites a large degree of freedom. Next, where you see uh, the idea of looking through in the other direction, and then this one where you see the view in, in, in that direction. Next. And, uh, and here you see the different levels. So you see that this is connecting uh, with the view and also when you want to walk uh, um, um, pieces of the same level. You know? uh, well, for, for myself, this, this, this was uh, quite a, a fruitful scheme, and I, uh, it's like all these competitions, you're not winning, you have ideas and they are in the drawer, and you use them uh, again, you do change them, and so Am I too, too long? No? Next. Uh, so this is, this is about the, the plan, and you see on top, you see that, that, that I changed the direction. Uh, 
which is of course not necessary, you also can make a museum just, just with once in, in this way. It's an idea, you know, which is, so to say, um, um, adapted to this, uh, to this thing. So in structural sense, it's an idea, and you can, I don't know, you can, you, you can do it in different, uh, in different, uh, uh, in different, uh, well, uh, concretizations, uh, to competence, you know. Next. Uh, going back to Amsterdam, I just wanted to show you something of the schools I made. And this is the two Apollo schools. And I'm not going, because it's going too long, uh, I think. I'm not going uh, on uh, to, to tell everything. Uh, just let's just go to the inside of the schools. Next. Uh, here you see uh, that there is this this, uh, 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 you can read this idea of the split level, next. And um, um, what it is, in fact, is a hall uh, around which these classrooms are grouped. Now, uh, there, are, there are some architects in the world, um, in, in history, that made schools with the classrooms like a train, you know. And, of course, that could be beautiful classrooms as such. But a corridor alongside where you have the garden and things never works uh, for the children together. You, you, you know there's a bell or something and then people come out and they bump to each other because they need to have their coats. And that's all the contact they have, bumping when you need to <laughs> go, you know. And, and when you come in, it's more or less uh, the mirror, mirror wise, the same thing. And uh, I think we should not make schools like that. I'm not the inventor of the school around the hall. It may be invented in England. I, I think the, the, England, the, the, the English school program was very early already making this hall schools. Uh, so I'm not going to tell you that I invented this. But I think it's very important to, 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 to actually do it, to implement it. Because uh, uh, such a hall confronts people, you know, come from one classroom, uh, others come from the other classroom, hey, how are you, and why are you looking so badly, what happened, and so very uh, simple contacts start, and also can you have, of course, formal, formal uh, meetings, uh, uh, organized meetings. I made this split level-wise because that that increases the contact between, uh, 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 because you can also, from upstairs, you can look down more to the classroom. And also, you get this amphitheater-like thing, which is going to play a very big role in school. Next. Uh, first of all, you see that when there is a big meeting, you don't need to drag around hundreds of, of seats, because you have them already uh, on the floor. And that's, that, that's quite practical, you know. Uh, next is that also some people are sitting there eating their, 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 their sandwich, uh, or reading something, waiting for the teacher for such and such, uh, who is a little bit late. Uh, and then some people come uh, um, from, the, from the other classroom, and they're a little bit, they're happy that they're free, and they're coming out in this way. And then they say, oh, and they start to say, I, 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 this was not mentioned to be a, a performance, but okay, we go on. And then all of a sudden, that does not happen once a year, but once a day, that uh, without any organization, a sort of um, a performance um, 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 ID um, um, uh, happens because uh, uh, players and audience spontaneously are, are, are incited, so to say, by, by, the, by, the, by the simple fact that you make the steps. Making this amphitheater, uh, this, this the theatrical um, uh, um, uh, condition in, in your building helps the people to, to use it in that way. Next. And also, uh, um, 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 yeah, well, uh, in fact, I don't need that lamp at all. Is it possible to, to dim it? Yes, I could do it. Uh, uh, um, you know, 
this is a picture taken in New York in 1967 uh, uh, or 8, when there was a sort of revolution, a uh, student revolution. And there I noticed the funny thing that the stairs that was, uh, that was meant to be the formal, formal uh, means of entrance of the, of the library, in such a way that uh, you are quite tired when you are upstairs, <laughs> so that when you start your first book, you have to, to control your, your breathing, but that seems to be uh, the thing to do, you know, it is always in architecture where you have an important building, you have an important stair, so it must be in the Bible or somewhere, I don't know. But anyway, it's a formal attitude to architecture, temples, and so it's always making people tired. Uh, to, to, to give them to, uh, the, the right mood to be, uh, to be mature, to, to understand uh, about the God uh, involved. Uh, anyway, uh, it is very interesting to see how this formality, how this formal, formal quality can change completely in such a situation that the same stairs um, um, being uh, signifying uh, uh, you know the fact this is an important building so take care because that's the way the architect uses the stairs can be used in a completely opposite way in the reversed way and, and, and become the, the most informal situation you can think of grandstand so you see how a f this for me is a key picture in my whole thinking you know how a formal uh, system uh, can be reversed by the daily life into something uh, well can accommodate uh, once more this uh, this other thing and that learned me that the stairs is not just to to get to the first floor but can also be something uh, more of a grand uh, can have a grandstand quality in it next and the, the same thing you see in this Surkai India picture, which was also very important for me uh, uh, to notice that in this royal pond, which is made uh, for, for, for kings and queens, that the normal people wash their clothes, and uh, that you have all these steps, uh, in fact, uh, made because the, the water level changes, so sometimes in the, in, the, in the wet season it may be very high, so you need lots of steps uh, in order to accommodate uh, 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 every uh, situation in, um, um, uh, in the year, but that they are used by people um, um, uh, not as stairs to walk down in a more or less aristocratic way, but to, to just wash and lie down their things. So that sort of pictures influenced me and made me think of uh, uh, how to make uh, that situation in the school next and it is also in the Montessori school one of them is the Montessori school and there the people are free to go out of the classroom and to work uh, on themselves and it turned out that they use this stairs as, a, as tables as very long tables where they just uh, uh, put, put off uh, take off their shoes uh, because they have the feeling that they're sitting on a table and their mother has said them you should not uh, go with your feet on a, on a table and they are working there and uh, happy enough I made them in wood because it was a very strong hesitation and many people were, were proposing to make it in, 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 in stone because uh, um, having uh, mentioned the word amphitheater everybody gets his association with the stone and, and marble and so make it into a real amphitheater make it stone and I was hesitating and finally said, no, we should make it in wood. And I'm very happy because with stone, this would not have happened. You know, because this, is, this has the association of table, so it's now going to be interpreted as a table. So it is uh, about layering. There must be layers in your thinking, in your architecture. You cannot simply make a thing which is just uh, one thing with one meaning. There must always be this layering of different associations that uh, and consequently different possibilities because that is is what what the people uh, um, uh, make 
uh, going into this direction, into that use, or into another use. Next. Uh, here you see uh, that the light is coming from above, and you see that there is a stairs with a glass pavement. And of course it's glass pavement because you, you should not block the light uh, that falls down. Next. And uh, so the, it's of course very nice to make a stairs with glass pavement, but it's not because I thought this was the decorative thing to do at this point, you know. You see so many people are using glass bricks because they think they're very decorative and you put a little bit of the Maison de Verre of Paris in your, in your soup uh, by, by using some, some glass bricks. And most of the people don't know, uh, uh, they just, people drag around with, with architectural elements, with, with, uh, with materials, just because uh, oh, it's funny, or, or I don't know the words, especially not in English, you know, for, uh, uh, what it is, you know, when you do that. Uh, but I do it just uh, when you need it for the light, and that sort of stupid Calvinistic, uh, mm -hmm. almost rationalistic reasons, which, which are for me the main, the main, um, um, uh, well, uh, how do you say, the main, uh, well, reasons. Next. Oh, well, yeah, this is, this is, of course, a sort of invention, you know, because you know about the light, you know about the, the pavement, and to do it. but of course, next uh, picture, uh, uh, Le Corbusier invented that long, long before in the Maison Clarté in Geneva in 1932. He used uh, already this, this uh, glass bricks, so knowing your classics, you you, 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 you are better off, you know. But, uh, but I can analyze, to, uh, I happen to, to, to teach in Geneva, and I know uh, more about the situation in Geneva than of most, uh, most other, other um, uh, towns. Uh, <coughs> when you are in Geneva, you see that there are everywhere skylights. That's one of the first things an architect uh, um, uh, observes, you know, perceives, with all the skylights in Geneva. And I was asking, why all the skylights? Yes, because there's a law in Geneva that you must light, lit your staircases naturally. It's forbidden to, 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 uh, to, do, uh, to do it just with artificial light. So now, the, the, now I understand what happened. Uh, if you see Le Corbusier, uh, with, the, with the, 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 the plan of his uh, apartment going to the building police in Geneva and, and, uh, and, and the building police is saying, well, uh, sir, I'm sorry, but I cannot accept this uh, plan. I said, you cannot accept it? He says, yes, you have no, uh, no, no natural light in your stack. And you must know, uh, you're Swiss, aren't you? You must know that <laughs> this is here in Geneva. Uh, you need to oh, my God, but that, this is impossible. When you see the sketches of Le Corbusier, you see how he tried to make more apartments in, in it, more and more, you see like a Chinese puzzle to get it in, a Japanese puzzle, you know. You, uh, you know Mr. Banner, who was the man who was selling sun shields, and he, was, uh, he had seduced, convinced, seduced Mr. Banner, uh, not, uh, he was asked to, to design sun, another sun shield uh, thing, and he, uh, and he boxed, and, and he seduced him to make an apartment building, saying, listen, you are going to be the first man in the world to have the first building of, the, of our new age, and I'm going to design that for you. And the man had not so much money, so you can understand that he tried to make more apartments in it, to make it financially going. So then he came the building police, he said, so it's impossible. So he faced the problem that he had to take out uh, another eight or 16 apartments. And then he thought, what can I do? And then they thought, pavement, this, and they go back and go, yes, okay, yeah, it's natural light, okay. So Le Corbusier is the real creator of the thing. However, Le Corbusier was also a man of good eyes, and he also knew his classics, next picture. And I'm quite sure that Le Corbusier knew that, that it, this was done before. In 1914, Bruno Taut, in his glass pavilion in Cologne, 
what using this all in glass of Bruno Tout is the real creative man <laughs> who invented the idea of glass bread. However, this was, man, um, this was designed for um, a glass factory. So I can imagine what happened. Bruno Tout came with his plan to the glass factory and, uh, and said, well, this is my plan. And, and they said, is that all? <laughs> me also to make the stairs also in glass and they said yes we want that and then he went home and he also made the stairs in glass so what I'm what I'm telling you is that creative creativity uh, inspiration is I don't think such a thing as looking out of the window and asking and waiting for the 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 the, 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 the mighty God to give you the stroke and then uh, go to you <laughs> and then uh, make the big thing. This is the way architects are always represented, you know, like Whoa! <laughs> I don't think it works that way. I think it works much more like what Le Corbusier is uh, saying. It's a patient search, you know. It's time to find your way out and putting together conditions and, and organizing conditions and try to put it in such a way that, that at the end it is, it is something, you know, and, and, and knowing, and knowing uh, the, the, the people who were before you, that is culture, not quoting, not quoting stupid capitals from Corinthian capitals because you can so nicely reproduce them on a computer, uh, but, 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 you know, uh, using the intelligent, the, the, the force of intelligence of, of, of a history, all the intelligent and uh, sophisticated and poetic things that are done in, in history without, that for me is forbidden, uh, without quoting, but having the taste of it in your, in your, in your dish and, and, and do it in your own way and better. Next. Uh, this is my stairs of the schools and they are very funny because they are half of steel and half of concrete. I, I did not want to project out more concrete because then you get this very uh, uh, somber, uh, uh, dark atmosphere uh, down below. You always, when you have too much concrete sticking out, you have these dark corners. And yet, I wanted to have a large and generous stairs where people uh, uh, can sit and wait in large numbers before the school is opened and after the school is closed. So I had this, this, this contradiction, you know. I know that there's a book about com complexity and contradiction. I'm <laughs> quite, quite against that because, because I, I don't want to, to propose complexity and contradiction as a sort of a reci recipe, you know, in the sense of make it more complex, make it more contradictory, you know, that it's going to be good. That is, uh, that is that is the lesson uh, of, of, of that book, you know. Uh, but but uh, so you know you're better when you're making more. Compl but I I am not trying to make things more complex and more contradictory. But I face the fact that 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 they are contradictory and they are complex. And I'm not saying okay, we make just a big. Uh, we forget about this. I don't want to forget about this. I don't want to uh, to forget about that. And I, f I, I find myself in the, in, the, in the situation that things are very complex and very contradictory, and I try to solve it in the less uh, complex and the less contradictory way. And therefore you get this funny stairs with a piece of steel and a piece of uh, concrete next. And, uh, well, after all, it's, it's quite, uh, at the moment I decided to do it, I was trembling and I did not see the solution yet, but after all, it is quite nice to have this concrete uh, uh, structure and this uh, light, more or less floating path which is added to the, to the thing. So you come out. When you do such a thing, you will not find a form which is common for which your friends are praising you, but uh, you will find maybe something which is not yet done and which also works. Also the glass pavement and you have also this canopy quality and here's the entrance to the kindergarten. 
and you see the 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 balustrade is is very much like a nouveau uh, in not just welded everything like a, a big sausage or a big spaghetti you can start in one part of the building and just <laughs> the whole building, you know, like the best architects of our age do. But I try to just compose it out of elements uh, in such a way that you, that, that, that you, that, that you read the way you can, uh, how do you say, disassemble, uh, assemble and disassemble them, you know. You must, uh, it must be so that you can see how it is, how it is made. And then I make this beautiful uh, um, decorative material here. And not there, because here it is nice to have it. I know that's decorative. Of course, I'm not mad. Uh, uh, in such a way that small children uh, have more of, a, of, a, of an outlook, you know. And uh, that, that, that's my, uh, my hobby, to, to finish it here, to make these two systems not match, but overlap, you see. Okay, I can go on on this picture, but there's, of course, too much of details. Next. Uh, uh, and um, uh, that is the other school, it's an awful picture, but it, uh, uh, um, um, where I try to make these very large bow windows that span uh, sometimes two, two classrooms. And here a very big staircase that also acts as a big plaything uh, for, the, for the surrounding, for the, for, the, for the place and all the people who are living around because this place is taken from them by the school so they should be able to to play there and they go around it by bicycles and they use it but I'll explain that later first the bow I never know whether it's bow windows or bay windows but anyway it's maybe the same uh, next this is bow, uh, uh, in a bow so maybe a bow window you see what happens it could be a bit, little bit more focused you see these two classrooms they have a sliding door in the middle and they are on themselves and have this angle of view and when it's open they have this they share as it were a larger angle of view and it is an experiment in what way can you with little opening uh, psychologically uh, uh, also make the the feeling of two one in one bowl two classrooms uh, um, um, to one next and uh, you see here uh, how how this how this uh, looks next. And uh, here you see uh, that it, that that the outside of your building is going to be uh, is going to be very much determined by it. And you have this outlook uh, very strongly. In the, well, but that is in fact learned from the from the typical London or uh, English at least bow window ID that you have this this zone where you are in your house yet standing in the street which is a fantastic quality which we have not got in Holland but which which we can learn in England uh, and which is just what I try to adapt in my way I I, 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 I ask you uh, for uh, to forgive me that that is that is interpreted in such a Dutch way next uh, and um, here you see the idea that window frames should have many uh, sills. And I know architects hate that because they love the graphics of the window uh, in this way or in that way or, you know, the way these are made. And it's just all these graphics uh, that are just, uh, that turn them on. But uh, I, I think uh, that it's very important, especially in a classroom, but also in, in, a, in a house, that you have um, the maximum of possibilities uh, of, 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 how do you say, occasion to put things, to put down things, plans, things you like, etc. <coughs> Next, and you see what happens, you know, in winter, you get this sort of photographs where your windows are are, um, are made by, uh, are not your windows anymore. They affect uh, frameworks for to, 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 to express the life of the people 
who are who are um, uh, who are possessing uh, this uh, the thing next, and you see that that it is not at the end it's not the architect that has, uh, that, that that is doing anything, and it is just you know because I make these cells here that they put not only plants here but all but also there, and and and, and I, I love that. I mean, they are destroying my architecture, but they are doing it in such a charming way. <laughs> Next. <laughs> hmm? Next. And you see, I am also, uh, this is a very low budget school, and it's not very beautiful, but it's just a small thing to, 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 to water thing. I mean, this is not very beautiful. I should have made a photograph, but she's standing in front of that. <laughs> you know, but uh, next time. But what I made is just this pile, this pole, with a piece of three centimeter thick glass on top. Good. Just that silly thing. Well, it's a nice word, silly and sill, you know. It's a silly, <laughs> sort of silly thing, you know, because it is just sitting there, everyone is looking, and they are not looking like this, but as a sort of spent spontaneous, natural act, they all put a plant on top of it. And it's so funny, where you come, you see a, th this plant stand. And for me, it, it, it's a detail, and I should not, 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 not talk too long about it, but it's very interesting that you can, with architectural form, and, and not bad, I mean, I mean, I think it's quite okay to have this pole and this piece of, of glass on top of it. You can incite people to, to, to put their things on it. In, 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 uh, and they are in fact completing the form in a not fair... Okay, next. Uh, and you see the stairs of this school. They are quite a, quite a big thing. And um, they are shifted. Oh, I forgot to take this, this slide uh, with me. But uh, uh, you must believe me that it was impossible to just make a straightforward stairs because these two parts of the building were not equal, so I could, they were like this, so I had to make some, sh no, in the other direction, they were like this, I had to shift the stairs in because it was impossible for me as a composition, you know, like a painter, it's impossible to make that stairs stiff where the facade was in fact bending in and, 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 and outward very softly. So I had to adapt this facade, this, this stairs, by shifting it. And then you got this thing, I don't know whether you see it or not, but then these two, ban uh, this, this two small benches or stools came in, and then the building police said, well, listen, uh, people are going to stand on it, so you have to make that so high that it's a balustrade, and think, oh my God, everything is gone. But then, I found out that it's very nice because the platform, the, the, the landing of the stairs became, thanks to the, the, the building police, a very intimate place where people from the, st from the street are sitting and talking with each other next. And, and, and uh, I could not have designed that, you know. In this way, uh, by making this, I, I found out that it's not necessary to make a better straight always that high. It's not in the Bible. You can also make a better straight that high, if you like, or that high. Uh, um, however, I'll tell you afterwards what happens. Next. And uh, here you see upstairs at the, at the landing, at the entrance, there's an, uh, okay, there's just an, uh, a steel, uh, a steel uh, uh, better straight, but I, next, <coughs> I'm, I, I bend it in that way. Next picture. Uh, it's almost there. You know, I made it in such a way that, um, what is the word? Just uh, um, not, not on purpose, as it were, but just, uh, the Germans say, nebenbei. Uh, I don't know what it is in English, but just uh, uh, casually, you know, as a second, uh, as a second uh, concern. Uh, you can sit on it. You're not obliged to sit on it, but it's made in such a way that knowing that there are so many people, 
so many children sitting waiting for the or that the door is not open so maybe they don't do it maybe they do it you can sit on it next it's designed in that way you know? uh, and of course it happens and if we had made our balustrade just uh, aesthetically graphically I don't know they, they, they might have have been sitting on the floor or uh, what is which is cold uh, or hanging or not sitting or maybe the school board would have put there a bench and when you come up with the architect uh, he would say this bench is not mine are they the stupid uh, users they put it there you know this was not my idea you know that's what happened next and uh, the same thing is true for this uh, for this uh, capitals at the wrong side because I make my capitals at the wrong side because I think, you know, this is the, the entrance for the uh, kindergarten and there are parents and they, they are very young and uh, they are a little nervous and they have to do shopping and, uh, well, it's my child. And they are not in the mood to simply sit down on a bench, but they are quite happy to hang more or less on the things. Next. Uh, and also, uh, you know, it is not so expensive. In fact, the column is there and you make this mold and you have these people at the right moment put, put some concrete in it. And next, uh, it is a sort of extra, which also the children, when they're playing during the intermission, there's one girl who doesn't feel well or has a book which is just more interesting than the, than the, than the, than the playing, and, and, and she's going to sit there. And, and, and that's, that's always occupied in that way or another. Uh, and I, I'm exploiting these sort of things. Uh, however, it was not my invention. Next, uh, next picture. It was done long before. Bernini in the Piazza San Pietro uh, did it already, you know. <laughs> and uh, it is to exp explain that I'm, I am not so much against uh, classical architecture, you know, as, as, long as, as long as you can sit on the columns. <laughs> and so far, I have not seen any Krier column uh, where you can sit on the columns. I'm waiting for the Venturi columns. <laughs> uh, I'm not against it as long as you can sit on the on the on the bases, you know. Next. Well, I'm almost there. I'm just giving you in a small series a sort of uh, well resuming some of the again some of the criteria I was putting on the table about uh, making your balconies in such a way that you not only have an intimate place where you can sit on yourself uh, um, but that are also a place where you can ask uh, to your neighbor whether he or she can, uh, can, uh, can uh, uh, has some coffee for you because you are out of coffee and uh, uh, that is that's an important thing to have this both this 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 different options this different conditions in the building next and of course uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> should, should have should have holes <laughs> it is yeah yeah once there was a question whether this dog was having a string on his neck and was held there. <laughs> but it is much simpler. As people think to complicate it. It's just at the well, I, I my exposure was too too quick because this 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 tail was moving and I could not score that on my photograph. But it's simply uh, at the other balcony there's also a dog. <laughs> But, but what in fact I try to say is, is something more serious than that. That is that architects uh, um, should be, um, by law, should be obliged to make openings in the balustrade such that small children uh, can look out. I mean, it should be forbidden that architecture, for the sake of of good proportions, so wait a moment, a little bit higher, yeah, 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 like this, oh, I think I prefer it a little bit higher, you know, 
One on the road goes beautiful, that plane. Oh, I love it. Look how beautiful it got. You know, that sort of nonsense. That should be, uh, well, of course, it's admitted as long as, as uh, 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 that should be the building police's part, uh, that there at least are openings for the children in one way or another to look out, because it's psychologically uh, necessary for, for small children to see something of the, out, of the, of the outside world. Dex? And, it, and you can make it very aesthetic in this way. Well, this is uh, about small, small, uh, about, uh, about size. And what it, what it in fact is, is the descent uh, boxes I have made in a smaller, in a smaller uh, size than, than, than normally. And you find out that uh, things happen that you have never seen in the sand pit. The, the sand pit's next uh, picture um, are always made such that uh, big groups, that, uh, uh, for big, big groups, but if you know something of the psychology of small children, you know that they are unable to, to, to play in large groups. If there is a large group uh, of children playing, there's always a teacher behind it. Uh, behind it that said, okay, one, two, you, now, this, yes, okay, good, you also, you know, like this. And then they do, of course, in large groups, you know, I've seen them in Japan, hundreds, with a small <laughs> table, oh, like this, uh, you know, like this, hundreds of people, you know, there you can work with as many as you want. But when you let them alone, they are playing house, and it's always, uh, mother and father and uh, two or three children and then the children get uh, something to eat, some sand and then they have, to, <laughs> they have to lie down to rest and then they lie down and rest and after two minutes they don't like it anymore they, they, they walk away and then there are two left uh, making sand castles it's such an organization you do it with three three or four so you must make maybe compartments in the sand boxes such that uh, that it uh, accommodates for, say, uh, two, three, or four, four children. Well, this is always too, too long. I just want to finish. I'm not going into, I, I, I have been showing too many details, I'm afraid. Next uh, picture. I just want to, uh, to finish with two pictures of which this is the first. And I want to come back to that story about formal order and daily life. This picture proves that what was meant to be the most fantastic formal order for kings and queens, uh, this royal, royal pond, is going to be adapted by the daily life of all sorts of people, in this case uh, most of them very poor, and uh, it is because it's designed in such a fine way with the articulation, and I don't know uh, whether this is just made for, for reasons of aesthetics or that they have uh, anticipated this, I don't know. But it is so, <coughs> such a beautiful articulation where people can find their own territory. And, uh, you know, I told you why there are so many steps, that here you see that architecture with a big A, you know, like AA, with these two big A's, and architecture with a small A, like, uh, you know, we're not talking about it, are going together and are one thing, you know, uh, as long as what you are making is, is generous. So what I'm asking for, uh, uh, and what I'm trying to do, is, uh, is, is compose, organize, compose forms in such a way that, that, that they are generous to people. Next uh, and last picture. And this is, uh, this is, so to say, symbolizing a little bit my story. Architects should, instead of making gigantic, awful sculpt pieces of sculpture, uh, they should make, they should concentrate on the bases instead of on the sculptures in such a way, make bases in such a way that the 
people are able to make it in their sculpture. Thank you very much. For me, it's not too late to do for questions or for discussions. But I only hope that there's a, there's a restaurant left uh, open to eat something. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think actually that if we started to discuss the questions, I mean, it's a bit perverse. The fact that there will be so many sort of means we get trapped here. I rather think perhaps people can come and talk to you for some time afterwards. Um, and uh, um, so if people do have questions, because I'm sure a lot of people just want to get out, um, you know, it'd be a bit of a shambles. Um, but Herman, thank you very, very much for, I'm sure something that's obvious that everybody found a very stimulating lecture. Just one final thought is that when you go and visit one of Herman's buildings, one of the things that is striking is how they're used, the way he des describes it. I think particularly the later works and the sense, the spirit that the buildings have of them being very thoroughly used and very thoroughly enjoyed is just something extraordinary and I can think of practically no other architect's works that you get that feeling from and I think the slides really um, presented that. Herman, thank you very, very much. <laughs>